Automata. 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 All right, everyone, I'm here for a coding challenge. I don't know what number coding challenge this is for 2023, but I'm certainly not above one hand here. No more than five have I done. It's been a slow year. I've been working on the Nature of Code book. The original version was published in 2012. I've been working on a new version of the book, you know, <laughs> basically ever since that first version came out. But finally, finally, I have completed writing it. You can actually pre-order it. There's gonna be a physical version of the book. The whole thing is available online. I'm still working on the design for the website. I'll show you some samples here, but maybe even if you go to the URL, natureofcode.com right now, you might see something new, a newer design. Maybe, you, let me know. Let me know in the comments when you're watching this. I hope that in 2024, I will be able to return to making more regular coding challenges. And I'm gonna to start today by attempting to code without a lot of practice, mind you, and I haven't looked at this example in well over a year, so we'll see how it goes. The Wolfram Elementary Cellular, oh dear, I have to pronounce this word now. Automata. Automata, I think that's right. Automata. Now, I have completed a coding challenge about cellular automata before, uh, namely coding challenge number 85, The Game of Life. The Game of Life was famously written about in Martin Gardner's 1970s Scientific American article, describing it as recreational mathematics. Fast forward 30 plus years later, and Stephen Wolfram published the 1,280 page tome, A New Kind of Science. Wolfram's book discusses how cellular automata aren't simply neat tricks, but are relevant to the study of biology, chemistry, physics, and all branches of science. Okay, let's first define what a cellular automaton is. Automata, 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 the song. The core foundational element of a CA, which will make my life much easier if I just say CA from now on, is a cell. This is the cell in cellular. The cell has a state, typically some finite number of options. And the most bare bones basic version of that would be just a zero or a one. The cell exists inside of a neighborhood. In the case of a one-dimensional CA, that cell is just going to have a neighbor to its right and a neighbor to its left. In the case of a two-dimensional CA, like with the game of life, that particular cell might have neighbors that surround it in all directions. You could imagine how you could have an idea of a cube being a particular cell inside of a three-dimensional CA. But the simplest version of this, the elementary cellular automata, is in one dimension with a cell that has neighbors to its left and its right. So these are the elements, the cell with a state and the fact that it has a neighborhood. This over here is a CA, it is a grid of cells in one dimension, each with a state. Now, it might be interesting to think of this as infinitely long, that would be in a theoretical space, but the fact that I'm gonna to try to visually represent this in a P5.js sketch, and then I have a, a limited amount of uh, actual whiteboard space, I'm gonna just, right now I'm picking, my CA has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, cells. What's missing, what I haven't drawn yet here on the board, a huge missing piece of what really makes a CA exciting, are the rules. What happens to the cells and their states over time? But before I even get into that, let's look at how am I going to code the elements of a CA and represent visually a single generation. Let's represent that as an array. Now, just for cleanliness here, my canvas is 400 by 400. What if I had 10 cells across? So each one would be 40 pixels wide. Let's make up a variable for the width of each cell. And I'll hard code that now at 40. And inside draw, let's visually represent those cells. How about a one will be black and a zero will be white? Well, that's 10 cells across. If I were to say fill with cells index i, times 255. So now when there's a one, the cell is white. When there's a zero, the cell is black. I could invert that. Perfect. 
So the next question is, how do we determine the states of the cells in generation one? Remember, a neighborhood of cells is three cells together. How many ways are there to configure three cells if each cell can only have a state of zero or one? If I did this correctly, I should have eight possibilities. This is like a three-bit number. Two to the third power is eight. Wolfram's rules for an elementary CA specify an outcome, a new state for every single possible configuration of a neighborhood of three cells. This is what's known as a rule set. Let's take these first three cells. Their configuration is one, zero, zero. I can look that up here. One, zero, zero has an outcome of one. This particular neighborhood yields this particular new state value. Okay, let's look at zero, zero, one. One, and I, I don't know why I'm drawing some ones like this and some ones like that, it's confusing. Zero, one, zero. One, zero, one. Zero, one, zero. So for any given cell, looking at its state along with its left neighbor and its right neighbor state yields the result defined by the rule set. So this brings up a couple of questions. One, I skipped these cells. What do I do with the edges? One approach is that for this cell, which has a state of one, I could consider its neighbor to the right as having a state of zero and its neighbor to the left being the one on the other end, wrap around, so to speak. I could also ignore those cells and just copy their values or maybe define a different set of rules. Let's not worry about that for right now and let's just copy their values. The other thing you might be asking is, why did you pick these numbers? Zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. Why are those the new states based on these configurations? Well, hold that thought. I just picked those numbers out of thin air, arbitrarily. Let's just see if with any particular defined set of rules, if we can make the code work to go from generation zero to one to two to three, et cetera. And then I'll circle back and talk about why it is you might wanna pick certain values over other values. Let's create another array. I'll call it next cells or next generation. Then I'm going to iterate over all of the cells and I need the cell's new state to be a function of its current state along with its neighbors to the left and the right. All right, so I made up variable names for the neighborhood, the left cell, the right cell, and then I'm just using state for the current cell, the middle one, if you will. Then I'm imagining that there's some function that's called calculate state. It takes those three states and then gives me a new state, which I put into the next array. So I need to write that function. And it receives three arguments. I'll just call them A, B, and C. And then I need to return a particular value based on that configuration. If I have A is zero, B is zero, C is zero, then I should return a zero. And for reasons which I'll explain in a minute, I think it'll make more sense if I actually start with checking one, one, one first. Now, for all of you who are screaming at whatever device you're watching this on. I know, I know. I'm gonna do this a different way in a minute. I just wanna write this out in the longest, most ridiculous, handmade way as possible to understand the mechanics of what's going on. And I should also put something in here to handle the edges. So let's have the loop ignore the edges and hard code those values in. So now I'm creating a new array. I'm copying in the edges just so I don't have to worry about them. And then starting from index one, I am calculating the, all of the new states based off of the rule set. Once I'm done, the old cells are now the new cells. All right, so while this is working, I'm not visually getting any kind of results. Let's make the cells much smaller. 
If the cells are only 10 pixels wide, I need to uh, have more of them. I'll start by having it just be an empty array and I'll fill it in. And let's fill it in randomly. This will give me a zero or a one. Okay, great. Now, this is a moment where you could choose to be very creative. How are you going to visualize the generations of the CA system? The classic way to do so, the way that Wolfram does in a new kind of science to visualize them is by stacking them. And this is what I've drawn here, generation zero, and then go down a row to display generation one, and so on and so forth. Let's add that into the code. So I need a variable called y, we'll call it. We're gonna draw all the cells at x comma y now. And then after we're done rendering a generation of cells, We'll just go up by the size of the squares. Oh, that looks fun. But I'm going to need to not erase the background. And there we go. Fascinating. Now, this is what I got with this arbitrary set of rules that I picked out of thin air with the first generation, generation zero, if you will, of all the cells having a random state. The typical way, the way that Wolfram would demonstrate a 1DCA is to actually have the first generation all with zeros and only the middle cell having a state of one. So let's set them all to zero and then let's set the middle state. Oh, I have an even number of cells, there are 40 of them. Let's make the canvas 410, that'll be fun. Okay, look what we've got there. I have now, in however long this video has taken, programmed an elementary Wolfram CA. Looking at Wolfram's MathWorld website, the page about the elementary seller automaton, you'll see that there are 256 rules. And if I scroll around here, I think I should be able to find the one I just made. Rule 186, that really looks like the one I just coded. Rule 242 also looks suspiciously similar, as well as rule 250. I am going to take this number and I'm gonna write it as follows horizontally. This is an eight bit binary number. Two to the eighth power is 256. That's why there are 256 possible rule sets. Remember, it's a little confusing because there's zeros and ones everywhere. The state values are zeros and ones. The elementary CA could be a hundred cells long, a thousand cells long, infinitely long. But a neighborhood is only three cells, meaning there are only eight possible neighborhoods. Each possible neighborhood needs a new state value, meaning there are eight new state values. There are only 256 ways to configure eight new state values. This is one of them. What is the decimal equivalent of this number? Oh, do I have to do this math now? I can just go use a calculator. Let me, I'm gonna do it. I can do this. 178, is that right? I got 178, converting this from binary to decimal. Hey, look at that. Rule 178. Let's see what happens if I try rule 182 looks kind of cool. How do I write 182 as a binary number? One zero one one zero one one zero. I think that's right. One zero one one zero one one zero. Looking pretty good. Let's make it quite a bit wider and maybe the cell's a little bit smaller. We don't need to have the stroke. And look at that. Do you recognize that? That is the Sierpinski triangle fractal. This system, which is a system of cells that only have states zeros and ones. There are only little neighborhoods of three zeros and ones. There are only 256 ways to configure a rule set. Somehow, with this simple system, the Sierpinski fractal triangle emerges. Isn't that amazing? I wanna examine this further, but let's make some improvements to the code first. I could have the rule set be represented like this a string of zeros and ones. I'm gonna do an array though, because that'll make my life easier. 
Now, all I need to do is take the three values and convert them to the index into the array. If this is the array, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is a little bit tricky here. This 0 place is the 1, 1, 1 value. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But I'll worry about inverting it later. All the whole thing that I need to do is just take three bits and convert them to a decimal number. And actually in JavaScript, that's pretty easy to do. Actually, I don't remember how to do this. I can make a string joining them. And then I could say, okay, so this is the neighborhood. And then I'm going to say value equals, I think I could just use parse int, parse int the neighborhood in base two, it's a binary number. And then return rule set uh, value. Well, I got a different visualization, but that's because once again, I'm inverted. So when the states are zero, 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 I want the last element of the array. When the states are one, 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 I want the first element of the array. So I should just be able to say uh, seven minus. And there we go. Let's make this rule set a global variable. And let's look at some other rules just to make sure things are working. Let's do rule one. Oh, rule one will be fun. Pretty, I love it. In Wolfram's A New Kind of Science, he categorizes every rule into one of four possibilities. The first is uniformity where all of the cells tend over time towards one particular state. Rule 222 is an example of that. You know, I would like to be able to put the rule into the code as a decimal number. Now, how do I convert it the other way? If I parse int the rule value, oh no, can I do, uh, what if I do it this way as a string, rule value, to string base two. Does that work in JavaScript? I'm just totally making up code. Am I supposed to actually do this? Ah, yes, that worked. Okay, I need the number. I have the number it converts it to a string. Let's have the rule set be a string and then change this function to return uh, parse int. Okay, great, awesome. Rule set 222, uniformity. The next category is repetition, a rule set by which the cells oscillate, repeat some pattern over time. At rule 246, let's try that one. There we go. Those are what you might expect with such a simple system. The next two categories are where things get a little bit more interesting. The third categorization is random, and one of the more Famous rules for the Wolfram CA is rule 30. Remember, there's no random numbers here. This is a fixed, discrete, deterministic system. Yet, let's put in rule 30. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Oh, because I don't have the leading zeros. Okay, so this is a problem. I guess I can add the leading strings. Uh, while, the leading zeros, sorry. While rule set dot length is less than eight, rule set, this is a terrible way to do it, equals a zero plus rule set. Somebody will suggest for me a better way of doing this in the comments, I'm sure. Okay, but great, here we go, rule 30. Now, I'm only seeing a fraction of this. Let's give myself a lot more space. And the fact that I'm clamping the side is a bit of a problem. Should we add the wraparound? Let's add the wraparound. So left is I minus one plus, let's just call length equals cells dot length. That's the total number of cells. So if I add the total number of cells and then apply modulo with the length, this will give me a wraparound. Oh, but I have to actually look at all of the cells now. <laughs> and I don't need this anymore. Try to find the pattern here. Could this be a pseudo random number generator? What a question. But there's more. 
Let's look at possibly the most famous rule of them all. Rule 110. Look at this. Is it random? Hard to predict? Yes. Is there structure? Yes. This is something of a mix between repetition and randomness. And this, I would say, is the essence of the beauty of the cellular automata system. Look at this textile cone shell. Look at this Wolfram Rule 110. I would love for you to make your own version of this. What can you do if you think about the CA system in terms of color? What if you invent your own system with more than just two states? What if the states are not discrete values, but continuous floating point numbers? What other things can you do to visualize the CA system? Could you have it be an infinite scroll? Could you have the rules change over time? There's too many possibilities for me to even think of. I hope that you will consider making your own creative version of the Wolfram Cellular Automata. Submit it to the Coding Train Passenger Showcase and stay tuned because this is just the beginning. What do you want to see next? What from the Nature of Code book do I not have a video about that you would like to see one on the Coding Train? See you next time. Bow, bow.